Welcome to my history of computer video games. The story really begins in 1951 at the Festival of Britain's Exhibition of Science. Ferranti International first displayed the world's first game. It was an old logic game called NIM. The following year, in 1952, A&S Douglas at the University of Cambridge in the UK created a one-player game of tic-tac-toe as a test for his EDSAC computer. Then, in 1958, the world's first sports video game was shown to the world, called Tennis for Two by William Higginbotham. This actually had moving graphics using an oscilloscope to display a moving ball. In the 1960s, the PDP, which stands for Program Data Processor, is one of the first computers to have a monitor display and was wowing university geeks all over America where the system was being installed. In the University of MIT in 1961, one of the students, Steve Russell, known as The Slug, and his friends at MIT were working out what they could do with this new machine. One of the projects they decided to write was the world's first real game. They called it Space War, inspired by the Lenzerman Skylark science fiction novels that he was reading at the time. Space War had two ships circling the sun where they must shoot each other. The game evolved with different MIT members, each adding a bit to the game. They put together the world's first game controller to even control the game. Nolan Bushnell had come across this game at university and could see a market in the arcades where he worked part time, currently the pinball filled with pinball and mechanical games, but with the PDP-1 costing $120,000, the maths just didn't add up. Fast forward on to 1966. Ralph Baer, a lead engineer working for Sanders Associates, convinces them to allow them to set up a division designing interactive television device. Ralph's concept is that there's hundreds and thousands of televisions out there in the USA. If he could build a device to control the TV and make games for it, then a fortune could be made. In 1968, Ralph Baer had moved far enough along to file a patent, effectively patenting any type of video game. But, for Nolan Bushnell in 1971, advancements with computer circuit boards meant that his finally his dream could be realised. So, working with Nutting Associates, they released the world's first video arcade machine, the game being called Computer Space, which was an update of Steve Russell's Space War game. The game bombed. You see, the trouble is, as Nolan put it himself, he loved the game, all his friends loved the game, but all his friends were engineers. The game was just too complex for your average guy holding a pint in a bar. Nolan knew the concept was good, and he just needed the right game that Joe Average would be able to play and enjoy. Moving on to 1971, the world had its revolution with the microchip being invented by Intel. Called the Intel 4004, it meant that computers no longer needed to take up the size of buildings and could be a lot more portable. In 1972, Ralph Baer's vision had reached fruition with his interactive device that was now complete. Sanders Associates licensed the product to Magnavox and called it the Odyssey. Early in 1972, the new console was privately shown at a trade show, wowing its audience there. One person who saw the game and its potential was Nolan Bushnell, who seeing the machine playing Table Tennis 3 with three dots on the screen and knew that this was the simple game concept that he was looking for. So, in 1972, Nolan Bushnell and Ted Dabney started up their own company called Atari. 
Atari is a warning given in the game Go, which Nolan was fond of playing. He thought a company name like that, with effectively saying the word check in chess, was a great name for a company to have. Al Acorn was also joined the company at this time. He was told, under false pretenses, that Atari already had a lucrative contract to produce a video arcade game. The game that was suggested would be Two Bats and a Ball, effectively like the one that Nolan Bushnell had seen at the trade show, although Al wasn't aware of this at the time. Al realised when making the game that keeping the ball at the same speed was a bit dull, and so he speeded up the ball each time that the ball hit the bat. He also added a point score so you could see how many games you've won or lost. Finally, he also wanted the game to have sounds. Already being massively over budget, he rummaged around with the chips inside and managed to get them to produce some pong sounds. The game was made and was called Pong. This game was about to give birth to the video game revolution. The game was first trialled at Andy Capp's Tavern and they knew that they had something special on their hands when after a week they got a call out to fix a machine. On arriving they discovered that the fault wasn't with the machine itself but the coin holder which had filled up to the brimming point with coins and so couldn't accept any more coins. From there on in, Pong was released to the world, and the world went Pong mad. Nolan Bushnell attributes this, the success of the game to its simplicity and the fact that women tend to be better game players. And so it became sociably acceptable for women to ask men for a game of Pong. This meant it was a great way to break the ice. Also in 1972, the Odyssey was finally released ready for Christmas. Initial sales were pretty slow, with part of the issue being that people thought that you needed a Magnavox TV to play the games, and so affecting sales. Well, thanks for listening to part one of the video history guide, and I look forward to explaining the next stage in the video gaming history in part two.